Last week, the world inside out Ukraine began to explore the past and the future, which simultaneously exist in the present. And our journey to time continues. It's like a time capsule in here. An extreme expedition to the past. This mine has existed for centuries. It hasn't been checked for 10 years, and anything can collapse in any second. Descent into a salt mine that is six centuries old. The wooden ladder is so old, I wouldn't want to go down without safety equipment. If there is a collapse, something happens, no one will help you. And the future that the miners from Soldar are creating. Careful, I'm turning it on. How much does it give us in volume? 220 tons per day. A unique Ukrainian development that will change people's lives in the future. All of this looks like the technology of the future. Ukrainians are in the top, and it's already bringing Ukrainian soldiers back to life. The moment of a warden. Serhii receives the cup he has well deserved. The past and the future, our journey through Ukraine continues. The world inside out with Dmitro Komarov, Ukraine. We are in the Carpathian region in Trihobych. It's called the city where all the salt is, and now we will find out why. Friends, where do you think I'm now? At first glance, it looks like something abandoned, neglected, very old and not working. But now, this is a unique place to be proud of. It's the oldest operating enterprise in Ukraine and one of the oldest in Europe. And it produces salt. Just imagine, salt has been mined here since 1390, almost a century before Columbus discovered America. This building houses a mine that was built in 1473, and the most interesting interesting thing is that it's still working. We are greeted by Oksana, who has been working at the salt works and the technologies for 43 years, 1473, right? The mine was put into operation. And it's still in operation? Yes, it is. Consciously under any government. How is it possible? The secret is that this mine is built of wood. And this wood is soaked in brine that it no longer spoils. Brine, my friends, is a liquid with a huge salt content. And when it is heated, the water evaporates, leaving the salt behind. And what is this? This is a pump jack. The principle of operation is the same as when oil was pumped out. Metal, unlike wood, does not like salt. Unfortunately, corrosion is an issue. You can see the metal here. We lower the stainless steel pipes 44 meters. An average pump? A submersible pump. That is, this thing, like an oil pump, is not working now. The mine is under us, and the modern pump helps to extract the liquid containing a lot of salt from it. And this is how the unique Drohobich salt is born. Previously, workers used to climb down ladders to the bottom and take out the brine in buckets. But for almost a century now, a pump has been doing the job. Today, under the supervision of emergency workers, we plan to descend to the depth where people have not been for a long time. Hello, good afternoon. Volodymyr, a pleasure. The emergency workers are preparing. Is this the first descent in how many years? Since 1984. So, for the first time in 40 years? Yes. Is it risky? It's very risky. We are so afraid. What kind of mission can we have today, given that everything has happened so far, that we can go down? What can we do for the Juhaubich mine? I am very interested in the depth from which the brine starts to flow and the intensity. I would also like the operator to record the condition of the roof support. Each floor has a balcony. What is its condition? We are ready to go down. This is not a joke. Now we will have an opportunity to have a good look at how the bowels of the earth give people the so-called brine, that is, the liquid with a maximum concentration of salt, which is then used to make salt. These are unique places nature has created. The brine is formed without human intervention. 
We have filmed many times in the world and in Ukraine how sea salt is usually made, for example. That is, water from the sea is brought into pools where it evaporates and salt remains. But here we don't need to bring water from the sea. The water here is just right under us, underground. Yes, it flows like a river. Well, it's not a river. It's a kind of migration along those folds that brings concentrated brine here. What does this mean? It means that where we are now in the Carpathians was once the bottom of the ocean. And then there were movements of tectonic plates and the Carpathian grew. And where the Carpathians are now, it turns out, was once the ocean floor. That's why there's salt there. The experts set up the descending mechanism and start working. The depth of the minus 50 meters, 12 floors. The condition of the ladders is unknown. We immediately go with a rope in case of a collapse, so that you are constantly secured on the rope, because this is a dangerous zone. First to go, what is your name? Ivan. Yeah. Ivan quickly goes forward to check the condition of the ladders and ceilings. Here we go. Okay. The platforms up to the fifth level. The sixth level is a little deformed, and there is this. Flooding. Brian, yes. Are you already at the bottom? I am. I'm going to the last one. He's going down to the fifth floor. The operator is allowed to go down. Alexandra's off. Releasing it smoothly. Be careful. Put the weight on the rope first. Okay, I'm ready. Friends, the adventure begins. I am standing on wood that is hundreds of years old. This, friends, is a real exclusive. Let's take a close look at it all. I feel like I'm looking at some kind of Titanic. Salt, salt, salt everywhere. The most interesting thing is down there. I'm going further. You got it? I've got it. Put some weight on the rope. Here, I put weight on it. It's like a time capsule in here. Fantastic. These forms have been created over decades. It's important to wait here every move here. After all, over the years, slippery salt buildups have formed on the ladder. Look at the condition. It's old wood, and this is only minus the second floor. Alexander, stand like this. Let's look together. Here we can see the mine is very, very deep, but we can already see the water further down. Okay, let's go further. This is more interesting. It's an old wooden ladder, and I really wouldn't want to go down without a hardness. It's dripping on my head here. The deeper you go down, the more moisture there is, and it's almost raining here. Everything here is wet. I'm ready to go on. If you shine the light like this, you can see similar formations on the ladder. You can't even see the light anymore. You can only hear voices. Alexander has created a rockfall. Careful! Is everything okay? You see, the rockfall was small. It was Alexander who stepped on these formations on the ladder. They're crumbling, yeah? I'll show you. You can see what this stalactite looks like, formed from a mixture of soil and salt. You feel like a time traveler. It's really cool. We have to hurry because here is the same danger zone. You can see it by looking at this corner. Look at the condition of the ladder. Everything is crumbling. If there is a collapse, something happens. No one will help you. Is there a last one there? Yes! We go down. This is where you realize that salt is one of the best preservatives and has been saving wooden structures from complete destruction for centuries. Builders of the past used oak structures, so theoretically such a mine can stand for a thousand years. 
There is one next to me. There is a water there. Yes, it's already flooded. Can't you go down any further? If you shine a camera down there, you can see that the dyes have rotted and fallen down. Let's have a look with the camera, Alexander. It's really raining here. Further down, the ladder is not in a satisfactory condition. We can't go down. We are at the maximum possible depth. This is minus fifth floor. One level below, everything is flooded with brine. Let's have a look. Here we can see the liquid clearly. It looks like clear water. Its temperature is about 10 degrees, but it's not ordinary water, it's water like in the Dead Sea. When fresh groundwater falls on salt deposits and touches it, a natural brine is formed very slowly over time. No one has been here for 40 years. What is the danger here? We don't know what kind of birds are underneath. If you look up, you can see what they seem to be fine. But underneath, since there is water for a long time, the birds can even rot from the fumes of all this. So theoretically, there could be a collapse at any second. Yes, and there is nothing to hold on to. Okay, we were asked by the most experienced worker to shoot the video as much as possible. Alexander and I will do it, show it and pass it on. This is already research. This is weird from 1473. Now you can see that water is dripping on me. Now we'll go upstairs and show you how to much salt is made out of this water. From the mine, the salt water comes here into a huge pool. It's hard to believe, but it's also made of wood. The salt water is flowing very fast. It seems to me that now I can even touch the air with my tongue and taste this salt. Yes, and everything is salty. And even touch this wood, it's splinter-free, like velvet. It seems like it was polished yesterday. Yes. And it's 200 years old. It is. Because of the salt. And a wooden nail like this. You see, there is no metal here, no nails, because metal will not hold up. That's why the nails are wooden. All the joints are wooden. Everything was built taking into account the fact that metal is not allowed. The miraculous power of salt is noticed here, not only in the velvety services, but also in the workers who are said to be exceptionally rarely ill. It's very beneficial for the body. So we even have plans to create a health spa. Do you think that one of these pools can be turned into an ancient spa? It's very cool. Imagine, friends, a pool like this and you dive into it, the healing effect is like in the Dead Sea in Israel and Jordan, and thousands of people will come here to be treated to improve their health. Absolutely. There is no shortage of tourists here. Before the pandemic, almost 5,000 people visited the salt works every year. But there is a nuance that spoils the guest's experience. Let me be very frank. The company is cool. The technology is unique, historic. But here is where we walk in. I wish the camera would show a little bit of the general plan. This is a historic building. This is a mine. The mine. You can see the tiles. Look at the tiles. And a lot of tourists come here. A lot. Tell us, how do tourists react, especially foreign ones? There were tourists from Hong Kong, for example, who didn't want to walk through the swamp. At all? At all. I was very uncomfortable. A tourist comes in white sneakers and wants to keep them white? Yes. I've been to Hong Kong, so I understand it's so clean there that it's usually a shock for them. But I want to address Ukrainian tourist friends. If you are in the area of Jehovah, please stop by. Despite everything, there is something to see here, and you will not regret it. And when you visit, be sure to take pictures, post them, and pay attention to both the positive and negative aspects. Together we can change something for sure. Because if we talk about it, it will definitely change sooner or later. I think this is some kind of solution. Yes, and the walkways will be made sooner.
Unfortunately, today, this, one of the oldest enterprises in Europe, is in a terrible state. I want to believe that it will be saved. After all, there are few places in the world, and certainly nowhere else in Ukraine, where you can find a technology that has remained virtually unchanged for 600 years. Yes, it's really impressive. From the 14th century to the present day, salt has been extracted at this site of the same way. Now we're in the very center of the salt work, where salt is boiled out of brine just like in the Middle Ages. Here I see the huge bathtub. It's called Panva. It's 106 degrees. The water is starting to evaporate and we're going to extract the crystals that are formed from that brine. This is very pure salt. First of all, it is made from natural brines that were formed about 20 million years ago, when there were no Carpathians here, but only the sea. It's crazy. How many millions of years did you say? Somewhere around 15 to 20 million years ago. Just 15 to 20 million years ago, there was a sea in this place where the Ukrainian Carpathians are now. Can I taste some fresh salt? Of course you can. It's very tasty. Nice. You see, it's so clean, it even starts to sparkle in the light. It's like perfect snow. That'll be too much salt. You can have four grams. Doctors do not recommend more than that. How much did I eat? A little bit. That's cool. Cool, right? The salt is delicious, hot and crunchy. It takes one of three hours for it to crystallize from the brain. We have a salt maker here. Hello, I'm Dmitro. I'm Andre. How many years have you been working? 24. So you just take it and pull it up. I'll pull very lightly, very slowly, so that the salt doesn't wash away. You have to pull the whole steam out. My god, it's so beautiful. It's like fresh snow, it's really beautiful. If you want, you can try it. We are pulling it up a little bit. I'm doing this and trying to realize that this was done here like 600 years ago right here. Now pull it up to the end, to the end. See how beautiful this salt is. It's fascinating for the crystals. I just want to eat it like ice cream. You can. We now make such crumbly salt. We used to have a furnace where we would put salt in and pound it. They pounded it in here, stuffed it, turned it over and dried it in the ovens. The coat of arms of Drohobich has none such salt furnaces. And it looks like this. So these are your souvenirs? Yes. Our salt was worth its weight in gold in the Middle Ages. And now I think it's the same. You understand why? Yes. After Solidar was occupied. Yes. Solidar is home to Ukrainians' largest salt mining enterprise, Artemsil. Before the full-scale war, it met almost all the needs of Ukrainians for salt, which was still being exported. In 2021, before the full-scale invasion, Artem Sale produced almost 2 million tons of salt. There are 200 kilometers of salt tunnels, and the scale of the mine is such that you have to travel here by car. What was going on here? There was a panic here. Everyone rushed here, wanting a lot of salt at once, so we built a penwa in the upper shop and added another one. And we almost tripled our salt production. How much do you produce now? On average, 55 tons of salt per month. For Ukraine, it's not much. 55 tons per month is 660 tons per year. With an average consumption of 4 to 5 grams per person per day, the Tehovich Salt Works can provide salt to 400 to 500,000 people every day. This is approximately the population of Mikolai. It may seem like a lot, but compared to production volumes of, for example, Artem so it is very small, less than 1%, and before the occupation, Solidar was the largest salt supplier in Ukraine. Here are the bags that contain the salt, it's wet, and you can see the stalactites forming like in caves. Let's have a look. Wow! So beautiful, isn't it? We are in a cave. And stalagmites. Stalagmites, yes. 
The atmosphere is incredible. Just like hundreds of years ago, salt from the salt works is packed in bags and taken to dry. They used to transport aid and horses. Why did they replace the horses? The horses were old and had retired. Now we have a tractor. With an old trailer. Let's get on it and Ivan will drive us. We'll be all covered in salt. You know, it reminds me of how the Cossacks used to get salt. This is how salt travels further. Here we have a centrifuge. It's like a washing machine. So basically everything is very clear. A solution with a high salt content is extracted from the ground, then the water is evaporated, the salt remains, but there is still too much moisture in it, so the salt is poured into a centrifuge. It spins it like a washing machine, throws the excess water out here, and then the salt is sent to the drying line. We will see it later. After the centrifuge, a small percentage of moisture still remains in the salt, so it is then sent to the drying drum. The wet salt is poured in here, and the dry salt is obtained here. Here you can see the final product. Here it is. Here it is. This is where the salt is ground to a state of sand. Then the conveyor belt carries the bags for packaging, but the crystals are also left behind. They are considered a delicacy and sent to the restaurants. The salt is poured here, it rises to the top and is then divided into portions. The lid is opened and one portion is poured in. And then the salt goes down here and here is the plastic, which is glued together with irons to form portions. Now I'm going to catch one. Here is another hot boiled iodized salt from Drohobych. It's still hot. Now the final touches. The salt packs are packed for shipment in the best traditions of craft productions. This is done by hand. These are our girls. Hello. Hello. This is Stefa, our oldest employee. Stefa, since when have you been working here? Since 1966. Do you remember when you first came here? Yes, I do. I came as a packer. On the first day I was put with a woman and I did everything. But on the second day I was told to go to work, and then I became a machine operator and a foreman. Almost my whole life was spent at the factory. What do you think the future should be for this enterprise? It has to develop, it has to work, and that's history. I think it should not die, it should work. Stefa has been working at the salt works for almost 60 years. Let me join you in your work. Okay. That's how it's done. You see, this is the device. Each pack must be punctured to let the air out. All this goes to supermarkets, shops, and to a kitchen from Drehobych. Stefa, Maria, Oksana, thank you very much. And we thank you very much for coming to us. This is for you. A gift? Thank you. It's still hot. We hope it's salt. Yes. It's amazing how this small team manages to develop the salt production plant, despite the fact that this place's great tourist potential is being destroyed in front of us. The IHL technology is impressive. Hundreds of kilometers away, a small group of dreamers is implementing other technologies, modern ones. In the 18th century, the average life expectancy was just over 30 years. Today, with the development of medicine, we'll live up to 100. 
100 and in the future, according to the forecast, we will live even longer. But how good will such a long life be if the body wears out and gets sick? Scientists are solving this problem. Today, no one will be surprised by dentures of pacemakers, but the development of artificial intelligence promises a real revolution in technology that will allow us to live a quality life despite illness, old age and injuries. In this room, in the center of Kiev, one of the world's most innovative bionic prosthetics is being created. Every year, inventors come up with the most amazing ideas and bring them to life. For example, this bracelet, it literally reads my thoughts. You don't believe me. Right now, I'm thinking that I want to make a fist. The nervous system transmits this signal to the muscles and my fingers clench. But it's not just my fingers that are clenching. This bracelet uses special sensors to transmit a signal to the robotic arm. Look here. It repeats the movements. How does it work? Thoughts give an impulse to the muscles and the device reads these signals using special sensors. Okay. Isn't it impressive? And this invention is Ukrainian, made by Ukrainians in Ukraine and for Ukrainians, and it impresses the whole world. For example, this first thesis was even on the cover of a Time magazine in 2022. In its traditional ranking, the highly influential American magazine recognized the Ukrainian robotic arm as one of the best inventions of the year. Today, we'll try to understand how Ukrainian developers impressed the West. All of this looks like the technology of the future. This is a prosthetic arm designed to replace a lost limb. In essence, it reproduces natural movements so that the amputee can interact with objects, pick up, hold and work with them. It's controlled by sensors. And now now we're working on an improved control system with artificial intelligence that will study the patient and adapt to him. How does AI help? It can tell the patient, based on sensor data, what he or she wants to do at the next moment and give him or her a ready-made gesture. This is a new invention. So far, just over 50 people around the world have used this hand. Olena, startup employee, is one of them. Good afternoon. Hello. I'm Dmitro. Olena. Very nice to meet you. I see you have the same intellectual prosthesis. Yes. How long have you been using it? About two and a half years now. And in two and a half years, have you mastered the skill of controlling it to a high level? I do everything with it, including folding origami and making jewelry from small beads. Can you please show us? touchpad, keyboard. It's actually very simple and convenient, just like a normal hand. In fact, it was not difficult for me from the very beginning. It feels like I've always used it and it didn't happen. Let's say I see a notebook in your hand. Can you flip through it with its help? Yes, of course. Such elementary things. It's easy to do. We just switch the grip we need. We can take a pencil. So you can draw a heart? Yes, of course. Tell me, I'm sorry, can I ask how it happened that you have no arm? Since birth. But before you had the robotic prosthesis, what did you use? I started with bionics and was able to control it right away from the first day of use. That is, the strain of my muscles, given that my arm was completely untrained, was enough. And when I first saw this prosthesis, even before I put it on, I realized that it was my right arm. It's just not on me yet, but it's a part of me. And now it's more than just a prosthesis that performs the function of biological arm, it's a technology gadget, a tool that gives even more opportunities compared to a biological arm, because it's stronger, it's more durable, it doesn't get tired. It is also a stylish accessory. The idea of creating a smart robotic arm did not come to Ukrainians by chance. The startup believes that the most important technology created by mankind in the next 30 years will be the electronics inside a human body. Are there any foreign parts here? 
They are. It's usually electronics. We order the circuit boards in China and assemble them in Ukraine and motors because the motors are quite specific, small and powerful. We order them in another country. Now the developers are planning to create even more intelligent implants for people. Yes, our plans include the development of the entire arm, including the elbow and shoulder joints, the development of a smart leg that will adapt to the peculiarities of walking and an exoskeleton with it needed when a person has limbs but cannot move them due to some problems. By the way, Alexander and I tested the exoskeleton in Japan. This is a robotic skeleton that helps those who have paralyzed legs and a spinal cord injury to walk. Here we have a remote control in the form of a wristwatch. You have a gap of three seconds. I pressed the go button, got ready, took my crutches, and only then it did get a signal to walk. One, two, three. It starts to get up. It's a miracle. It lifted me up by itself. Guys, it's actually walking instead of me. The main thing is not to lose balance. I mean, the computer is fully in control. Guys, please come next to me so that I can stop if necessary. That is, this robot, this computer, which transmits the movement to my legs, is already working independently. And now, no matter how much I resist or if I completely relax my legs, they will still move and I will walk. It's a miracle. My conclusion at the time was that it was good, it was most likely the future, but it needed a lot of work because it was hard. So, can we do better than the Japanese? Absolutely. The Ukrainian robotic arm is equipped with artificial intelligence for easier operation. The technology allows users to perform almost all household and professional movements. It's also ultra light and weighs only 300 grams, almost as much as human hand. This version of the prosthesis does not yet have waterproofing, therefore it's impossible to wash dishes or take a shower with it. This should be improved in the next model. How much does such an arm cost? On the US market, $25,000, yes. And for the Ukrainian market, free of charge for the military. Unfortunately, it's not easy to get a miracle hand. Now they produce only 15 per month. To increase production, they need a lot of money. So to get such a prosthesis, you still need a sponsor. Today we're going to meet a man who was lucky enough to get an innovative prosthesis among hundreds of applicants. Hello. We have seen you on TV. What's your name, please? Serhii. Nice to meet you. Serhii is a professional soldier and handball player. He used to use a mechanical right hand. Let's shake hands. This is my humor. I just got used to it. At first I was afraid. I was ashamed of it. But in the summertime it was too hot, so I thought, what should I do? So I put it on and walk around. I'm sorry, can I have a closer look? You can, it moves because of this traction. It's a simple mechanical one. Yes. For example, if you move your arm forward, it opens due to the pull. It opens, yes. Or you can move your shoulder in the same way. For example, if you pick up something, you turn it over, and then you lower it and pick it up like this. Can I ask you how circumstances did this happen? A mine explosive. We were walking to the position, but crawling. And in the grass, the grass there is tall, so you can see it. And thank God that I was involved in sports. I played handball for veterans before the war. And thanks to what I know, I did the first thing I needed to do to close it, to stop the bleeding. And then I went straight to the evacuation team. Did you do it by hand? Yes, because there was no time. Everything was open. Turned out like a banana. What region, please? Down in Bakhmut. 
The surgeons were very good. They immediately performed an operation that allowed me to make a prosthesis. It was hard at home. I did not sleep almost all night. I thought about what to do next. What was the hardest part? To adapt to what was going to happen next. But I was left-handed. A person adjusts to everything on their own. For example, in Ecuador we filmed a girl who is missing both arms and one leg. She continues to live, even learned to use a telephone with one leg. You walked up the stairs so quickly. You use the phone with one leg very easily. I also love swimming very much. Very, very impressive. You have a very strong leg. How far can you swim? I have no idea, but I love swimming very much. Life goes on. I told you, if you stop, nothing will happen. I'm going to go back to help our guys who are at the front line. Fitting a prosthesis to a patient is a long and painstaking process. Developers never know exactly how long it will take. The prosthesis consists of three parts, an internal socket with sensors, an external bearing sleeve, and a socket that carries the load transmitted by the hand. It seems the fixation was successful. Now the prosthesis needs to be customized. To do this, you will need a special application. The most common movements are already loaded into it. For example, pressing, gripping with two fingers, holding a bottle, squeezing. The user will be able to customize the rest. Try closing and opening. It doesn't work. Because you see, you're tensing two muscle groups at once. You have to make sure that there is only one. Relax it. Put it on the table. Wait a little bit. When you want to change the action, you just relax and do the next one. Close. Open. Let's try to squeeze. Try to concentrate, relax your hand and close. Now open it. That's good. Is it possible to bring the control to close to perfect? So that you think that you want to move one finger and that one finger will move? Or will it not happen? We are working on such a system, but at the moment, as a product, it still needs a little bit of refinement. Of course, the fitting process is not easy and time-consuming. It's important how well the prosthesis is fitted, whether the sensors are in the right place, but even with a perfect adjustment, the prosthesis still cannot replace the arm. You still can drive. Is driving important? A driver car, a manual one. The user can create any kind of grip and to shift the gearbox so that it operates like this. It's more convenient. The bad thing is that there is no one movement. Three fingers, you understand what I mean? I get it. By the way, this is the first thing that users customize. The first thing, yes. This gesture, yes. To teach the prosthesis to react instantly, daily training is required. Serhi immediately tries a task with an asterisk, controlling the squeezing force. This task is more difficult and requires concentration. However, Serhi managed it on the second try. He's really good at it, because of some people it can take hours or weeks. The phone by finger. So it can even help you control the phone. It can. It's on all the fingertips, so the user can use any smartphone. There is sensitivity. It's great. Serhi has a long way to go to adapt to the robotic arm, but in a month we'll meet again to see with our own eyes whether the new development has really changed the military's life.
And now we are going to Zakarpattia to shoot exclusive footage of another unique production. After the occupation of the city of Solidar in Donetsk region in 2022 and the destruction of the Artem Cell Enterprise, which provided most of Ukraine's salt production, we had a big problem of where to get salt. But we found a solution. Behind this fence, we see not only a picturesque mountain range covered with snow and ice, but also a new production facility that appears in 2023. If everything goes according to plan, the production scale here will be about the same as at Antrim Seal, and Ukraine will be provided with white gold. This is a terrible deposit. A year ago, this was in touched field. In just 12 months, the company developed a mine and started producing salt, and soon it plans to supply the entire country with it. Hello, may I join you? Glory to Ukraine! Glory to heroes! Hello, hello. I am Dmitro Serhi. What do we see at first glance? First of all, salt. This is the most important thing. I can see the color is grayish. Yes, it is. This is the first product, technical salt for industrial processing. After our visit to the oldest salt works, we decided to show you this enterprise as well. You will see the first steps of the salt mine, which has ambitions to become the largest in Ukraine until Artem Sol returns. By the way, the white gold here is not deep. In some places, it's only 40 meters from the surface. There Therefore, there is every chance to achieve the goal quickly. This is our mine, so I will change my clothes. Okay. So we are ready. Let's go. We took the elevator down and out himself. We are already at the depths. I can feel my ears plugging up. Here, friends, 265 meters, and here we enter a tunnel that goes down at an angle. At a 14-degree angle, we have a shaft with which we open the rock. What's a shaft? It's a mine. It's the point where salt is delivered to the surface. There is a vertical shaft and a horizontal shaft. We're in the horizontal one. The vertical one is an elevator that goes down to a great depth. Yes. This is a horizontal. How far is it? 450 meters in total length. Let's go down. Okay. Vertically, it will be 50 meters deep. We have only gone through half of this shop. We have already concreted part of it to prevent water from entering the mine. The main enemy of salt is water. Our expedition behind the scenes of the terrible deposit is a real exclusive. The place is still almost unknown, and you are among the first to see these shots. We are in the salt pits. Is this salt? Yes, I see. This salt. It's salty. Now we have a packet of salt over our heads. That is, we have enough salt over our heads. Here you open your mouth and fill salt on your tongue and inside your mouth. It's all salt dust. A winch gave air to the mine. Now there was a command to add air and we'll see how this sleeve will become big. Oh, look how it blown up and the air went out. It's like snowing. It's very salty. Fresh air, which makes it possible to work at the face with constant fresh air and inflow. Everything here is very similar to Arton, so remember what it was like. I'll take off my mask so you can hear better. Now I can't take it off. It's impossible to breathe. It was from Artem's cell that a third part of the local team came to Zekarpodia. Employees of the salt giant from Solidar were especially sought out and invited to this job. It seems that the tragedy even gave the Solidar workers a passion to work even harder mining white gold every day. Here we are. Hello, Andrei, Sviatoslav, Dmitro, very nice to meet you. Serhi, nice to meet you, Dmitro. I'm Dmitro too, Mikola. Nice to meet you. I heard that many of you are from Artem Cell. Yes, I am from there. Can I see your face, please? Yes. 
When did you move here? On June the 1st of past year. How many years have you worked there? I worked in a mine in Artemsel for 13 and a half years. And now you're in the Zakarpadia. What do you think is the difference? What are the pros and cons? What is interesting that the mine was started from the very beginning and Artemsel had already been working there for 140 years before us. When did you leave Solidar? When we shipped the last of our stock. It was the last days we requested the rolling stock from the railroad, shipped it to the cars on Monday. And on Tuesday, the railroad received an order to return all the rolling stock loaded because the infrastructure was already destroyed. Bridges were blown up and there was nowhere to send the train. Do you remember when you first found out and saw that everything was gone? There was no enterprise, everything was destroyed by missiles and bombs. It was as you had no arm. It's like a phantom pain that you feel, that how much your soul hurts for the company. You didn't just work there, I was born there. And so for me, as for many of us, it is very painful, very painful. And it hurts, you know, not for the enterprise itself, for the buildings, but for the field. No one is watching it now. Unknown processes are taking place there, and it is not clear how they will end. And there is an uncontrolled flow of water into the salt mine there. So what are your predictions for what could theoretically happen there now? Could it be flooded? I suppose so. In some mines we used to pump water all the time, even before the war. For almost two years we have not pumped water at all. This is very bad. If water is not being pumped out, what does it mean? Sleeping arises, loss of their strength and the formation of dips. In other words, everything will be simply collapse. Not just one mine will collapse, they're interconnected by a network of shafts. You definitely remember these underground owls, even a hot air balloon flew in the air, an underground theater, an underground salt church and many other unique locations, an underground hotel. This wood is 270 million years old, and it's an ancient underground temple in a salt cave, which is unique. You can immediately see that it is a sanitarium, because what we are looking at is a net, a volleyball net. They took the salt from here, ate it, and hung a mirror, a hunger, curtains, and a bed here. It's cool. All of this is most likely flooded. I assume that such processes have already begun. The salt deposits in these places were discovered more than 200 years ago. In 1956, during the Soviet occupation, geological exploration was carried out to build a plant. But the plants were postponed. Here in this drilling machine, in simple terms, here is a layer of salt around us. Imagine, for example, a Napoleon cake. It has layers, and so is the soil here. There is a layer of earth, clay, and then there's salt. We find this layer and use the machine like this to break the rock into this mixture, small stones. With a flashlight, you can see what kind of salt is here. There is a part of it that is absolutely perfectly transparent, and there is a part with inclusions. This is an exceptional opportunity to try this profession. Can we try it? Let's do it. Be careful. Turn on our roller bit. It's on. Take this lever. Okay. The principle of operation is very simple. A giant machine breaks the wall and turns the salt layer into small salt stones. Okay, everything is clear. The machine is gorgeous. This machine was made in the Yasunovade plant, which is also unfortunately occupied. And the driver is one of the workers who came from Antrimsil to develop the new deposit. By the way, 
How do you like living here in the West after living in the East? The nature here is very interesting and beautiful. The climate, of course, is not the same as ours. It's much more humid here. What does the Russian propaganda say that you will be eaten in the Western Ukraine? Yes, they used to say that a long time ago. They didn't eat you, as I see. They didn't. You have a smile. Yes, I have friends here, a lot of them. It's just he's big. They don't touch him. <laughs> what are your plans for life? To live on, to live, to work. Do you still need employees? We do. Now you can address Artem Sale employees through our program. You are welcome to come if you are ready. We are ready to accept you. We help with housing. And this is a great team. As a director, I'm proud to work with such people. We will be very happy if at least one person from Artem Sale who is unemployed comes here to Zakarpadia, a very picturesque and beautiful region, and finds a job here, development, and a return to his or her favorite profession. It's a debut, right? And how much does it give us in volume? We produce 220 tons per day. 220 tons per day, this is 100 times more than, for example, Drehobych. I guess so. Different salt, but a hundred times more, yes. And how much is your goal? 150,000 tons a year, that is 40,000 tons per month. If you actively mine salt here, how you plan to do it? For how many years, decades or centuries will there be enough reserves here? A lot of years. In 50 years, we will only work out a small part of the project. We can mine it, and the salt reserves here are no less than in Artem Cell. There are more than a billion tons. What do you think are the prospects for this profession in Ukraine? We are actually one of the richest countries in Europe in terms of mineral resources, and we have something to mine underground. As the director of a company that is already doing this, what can you say to young people who may be thinking about what to do now and who make like this profession? There needs to be a job for such a person, and where there is demand, there is supply, and we will always need such people. We will train them in the future, that is, they can and will be trained with us. They will come, try it and like it, and they will stay and work. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I hope to see you here and there. And there in Solidar, too. I want to believe that everything will work out, that we will see Artem Sell and Solidar. That is, friends, we have a acquired this rock. Here it is. There are a lot of it. And now it needs to be loaded into a trolley and taken upstairs. For this purpose, here is a conveyor, and now all this will be dragged into the car. Load in! Now the final cord. This trolley is living and very soon this salt will be used. For now it will be used for technical purposes, for example for road salt. But very soon it will also be used for food. These are only the first steps of a new enterprise that will exist for hundreds or centuries to come. Local workers have the experience to show maximum results in a minimum time, so we can confidently say that there will be no more salt shortages in Ukraine. I remember when Artem Sel was occupied, there were lines for salt in stores. Arosh, did you decide to open this company after the events at Artem Sel happened? Yes, we are planning a different method, which is longer and more expensive, but in March of 2022 we realized that this was it gathered a group of our specialists and made the decision that it was actually possible to build it this quickly, which is quite fast. That is still technical salt, yes. And when will it be the table salt? In 2025. We can say that this place does not just give hope, 
It gives a guarantee and shows that Ukrainians can adapt to any situation, even the most difficult. And they will always find a way out of any situation. I have seen many proofs of this. And over the past two years, the whole world has been talking about it. You realize this when you talk to the people and anytime in any place during filming in big cities and the remote villages. Today in Kiev we met again with Serhii, a soldier and athlete who got a bionic prosthetic arm after losing his arm at the front line. Almost a month has passed and now we're going to see how our new friend Serhii has adjusted his prosthesis. Today is his special day, by the way. Hello. Hello, Serhii, your son. Yes, what's your name? Constantine. Can I see how you're adjusting now? Yes, it's a pouch because I need to change the finger. To change the finger? Why? It's got caught of something. You caught it on something. You can tell that the prosthesis is working. Yes, they told me not to spare it, and I don't spare it. It's like my own now. The beast of a car. Is it mechanics? Yes. Are you managing? Shall we go? Yes. Okay, we start the car and drive off. He drives it confidently. Why not? I've driven for this prosthetic before. At first, my wife was afraid of how I would drive with it. I said, don't worry about it. In general, if you take the impressions of a month, how many points would you give this one? As it's produced here, 10 points. Where are we going? To the sports complex. Today there will be a tournament there. So today the first match in two years. The first handball game, yes. What are your expectations, normal ones? Serhii has been playing handball since the second grade. He was a player in the Super League and coached his own team. Today, for the first time after losing his arm in the front, the athlete plans to go out on the playing field again. Thank you. Let's go say hello. Hello, are you wanted a man or something? Yes. Hello. You're good. Shall we run? Hello. Will you play? Big game tonight. Hello. Let's go to the gym. Our hero looks determined, but in reality, no one knows if he will be able to play with the prosthesis. We're going to try it now. I'm going to adjust it. What are you adjusting now? I want to fix the grip so that it can catch the ball. You can even catch it. Sure. Sport mode. Now you made our hand like this and it doesn't move, it doesn't react, doesn't respond to the sensor. Sometimes it has to be like that. Can I touch it? That's great! It's okay now, go ahead. And that's it. It's very impressive. Is it okay? Yes, I didn't even expect it to be like that. The first test has been passed. However, real handball is ahead, where speed, flexibility and dynamics are required. Such pressure can cause the robotic arm to break down, but despite the risks, Serhii still wants to play with the team. I'm going to change my clothes. And now, Constantine wants to tell me a secret so that his father doesn't hear. When he lost his arm, it was a mine and he shielded his comrades from the explosion with his body. Not only he, but all his comrades could have been injured. He didn't tell us. Because he does not remember what happened then. My mom told me about it. Constantine dreams of seeing his dad in the game, and he seems to be even more excited than Serhii himself. It's interesting to see how you tie your shoes. It must be exactly I've learned to do it. So even the shoe is held by a completely artificial hand, and it fully works with a shoe. The return of the prodigal son. I said you wouldn't be able to go along without the handball. I know. I know his character. He will never live without handball, without sports. He was the strongest player. After I found out that Sir He had gone to defend our homeland, I kept in touch with him a lot. 
in UK. At first they said he was injured, then I was shocked. And then the information came that he had lost a limb. Of course, we have a purely professional issue. The leading limb or not, because I'm right-handed and he's left-handed, but he doesn't have a right one and he's left-handed, so we'll see if he will play. So, dear friends, we're glad to welcome you to our tournament today. After that, Serhii Stefan lost his wrist. After a long break, today we'll take part of the tournament for the first time. Serhii, have a good game! Fans have also come to watch the tournament, but it seems that their attention, like Konstantin's and my eyes, is focused on one person. Yes! He scored the first goal. That's very, very inspiring. Congratulations on your first goal. What are your emotions now? Emotions are great. My legs are afraid. My hands are doing their work. Now it's normal. I just haven't run for two years, that's all. Are you going to go out again? Yes, we're now. It just scored another one. How active and motivated so he is, how he runs around, he's already scored several goals and I realize that under the thirst for life, the desire to live can allow you to continue living a full life in any situation, even if you have a disability. Sir, he sets an example for thousands of people who unfortunately lost their limbs because of the war or became disabled for other reasons. He is a full-fledged member of the team and the team treats him as an ordinary player and he is not given any favors. Now he plays on an equal footing with everyone else. He is a motivator. Our another tournament has come to an end. Guys, today we have the best comeback category, Serhii Stefan. <laughs> the third and honorable place was taken by the Legion 21 team. A solemn moment, the awarding ceremony. Senri receives the cup, which he has well deserved. You see, he even takes it with his robotic hand. Congratulations to you. Let me shake your hand. Tell me about your impressions so far. I am glad to be back. Thank you very much. You're an inspiration, you're an example. Serhii's example proves that Ukrainians do have a super ability. It is an amazing strength of spirit, and when it's backed by cutting-edge technology, it seems that there is really nothing to stop us. And the unprecedented challenges that we have to overcome now only strengthen this Ukrainian superpower. In the next episode of the World Inside Out Ukraine, Komarov has been captured. Now it's not Komarov, it's captured Komarov. On the anniversary of the full-scale invasion. There was a very important task to prevent the Russians from shelling Kharkiv anymore. 
an expedition to the childhood that has been stolen from our children. It's cool in Bakhmut. I knew how to go to kindergarten. I knew where the market was. And how we all can get it back. There is a request, they say, I should say as a counselor. Yes! An honest look at the war through the eyes of those who have the courage to speak friendly. Shall I quote what they say? I don't want my son or wife, for example, to suffer someday. On a journey that will make us rethink our future. They have photos of their deceased parents on the table. It is extremely powerful and very personal. We have a chance now to raise the best generation in history. This is the generation that this country has long deserved. The World Inside Out with Dmitro Komarov, Ukraine.